basic tools. What we've got here is a little fox squirrel. This is a little a tree squirrel. You guys are going to start on a ground squirrel, but it's the exact same process. So I've got a blade on my scalpel already, but I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to safely change these things. The last thing we want to do is like grab this blade with our bare hand and try to change it out. Just grab a pair of tweezers, a pair of pliers. Um, there's a little latch that you just need to peel open, slide that thing off. I'm gonna set this right here for now. I'm gonna open up a new blade. And the last thing I wanna do is with a bare hand, try to shove this blade on. So if you take a look at the scalpel handle, you'll see a bevel there. And then you'll see that same bevel on the back of the scalpel blade. So it's gonna go on that same way. And then the blade is gonna go, or the handle is gonna go through the blade. We're gonna just get it started in the groove, maybe. There we go. Right, and I don't want to push it because if I slip, I'm going to stab my hand. So all I want to do is now on a hard surface, just push down and now my blade is locked into place, right? So now I've got a nice fresh blade. Now that I've got this, this uh, packaging, I can put the old blade in there, close it up, and then I'll just, you know, tape that up and then put that in a sharps container for later, right? So you can, you can skin these, squirrels and your birds in a number of different ways and it just depends on you know what you want your final mount to look like so we could come from the dorsal side the back side uh, if we're going to show the belly so that any stitching that or irregularity in the stitching might be hidden in the back of the animal if that's not what's on display but this is a tree squirrel and so typically um, you know most tree squirrel mounts are going to be we're going to see the back of the animal and so in this case we're going to um, just do the incision on the belly or make the incision on the belly and that's probably not the best use for that but it works okay All right so i'm going to open this guy up so that i can see the belly and i'm just going to make an incision the length of the belly now the thing with incisions is um it doesn't really matter how many cuts you make but the more cuts you make the more sewing up you're going to have to do right so so we want to make as, as few cuts as possible but generally speaking, we're gonna start right about the middle of the breastbone and we're gonna cut down right to just above the vent. And that's gonna give us all the access that we need. Um, if we were skinning this out, let's say, you know, this was a deer and we weren't gonna, you know, save the hide, then we could cut the distance of, the, you know, down the legs and just open this thing up and get the meat off. But we wanna save this, this skin for stuffing. So I've got a nice sharp blade and um, if the hair is a problem, you can get some water and kind of push it to the side. The fur is not too thick here, so I'm not going to worry about that, but I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure and I'm going to make my incision. And you don't want to, you know, we're not stabbing the animal and, and carving it down. We just want to cut through the tissue, the, through the skin. We don't really necessarily want to cut through the muscle tissue. And so with a good sharp blade, bleeding a little bit I can just get through the skin now when you get to the visceral cavity the guts um, it's a little softer if you cut into the guts it's gonna be messy it's gonna stink a little but it's not the end of the world however if we can avoid that then we then we will so we just want to put enough pressure to get through through the muscle or through the skin rather but not through the muscle so now, now I've got my, my first incision and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel this back and very gently, you can see the connective tissue, right? Very gently, I'm going to cut through that connective tissue with my scalpel. So if this animal was fresh, you had just killed it, you just collected it, you just watched it get hit by a car and you have the opportunity to skin it, it skins really easily. Um, the longer these animals are in the freezer, sometimes it can become a bit challenging because of freezer burn. So the tissue is actually dehydrating. Uh, it gets harder to work with. Uh, it's not impossible to work with, but it certainly makes our job much more challenging. All right, and so, 
Notice that I'm not really putting a lot of pressure. I want to be careful not to, to cut through the skin, but at the same time, I don't want to be so cautious that I'm not making any progress, right? So you can kind of reach in there. Sometimes, you know, you can just get your finger in there and separate the skin from the muscle. Sometimes that doesn't work. That connective tissue is a little too strong. Um, in this case, yeah, it's still a little, a little tough in there. So we'll just keep working away at it with the knife. You can see I nicked, I nicked, I got into the visceral cavity just a little bit. So it's a little, a little juicy there, not a big deal. Just gonna put some of that in there and keep working. Now we need to get the skin completely off the carcass, which means we've got to get the legs out. We've got to get it off the head and we've got to get it off the tail. So we've got to work down Basically on the sides, we wanna work all the way until we can kind of get around the backside of the animal. I'm gonna just lengthen this incision a little bit. Um, get around the backside of the animal and then we'll free up the legs here. If it's a male, uh, we, if you want to save the scrotum and the sheath, you can, you don't have to. Again, it just depends on what your final mount is gonna be. Um, this is a little female. Uh, we're not gonna, it, we don't really have to cut anything away. So now I've gotten to the, the rear leg here. So I'm gonna pull this skin over and kind of push the leg up and we're gonna expose that knee joint there. Right? So I'm gonna just again, cut some more of this connective tissue. What we don't wanna do, and it's not the end of the world if he's got a broken leg and you've got bone shards, but if, if we don't have a broken leg, the last thing we really wanna do is actually break the bone because now we've created some little knives or some little knife edges that are gonna possibly puncture the skin, maybe cut you. So all we need to do really is expose this knee joint. We don't need to get a pair of cutters and, and cut through it. We just take our blade and we gotta find where that joint is and then we just make a little incision. And this is why our blades get dull because we're gonna start to, to kind of cut against that bone until we find that joint. And once we find that joint, we just wiggle that scalpel back and forth and that leg comes right apart, right? And that's ideal because now we don't have a sharp edge here that's gonna cut us or cut through the skin. And so we're gonna leave this lower half of the leg with the skin. We'll worry about that once we've got the carcass completely removed, right? So we're gonna, Continue to skin away, peeling this back until we expose the, the back side of the knee here. Be careful. You know, sometimes I want to stick the knife through and, and cut the muscle and that works great, but be careful not to cut yourself in the process. We want to completely separate the muscle um, from the skin here. So now, now I can pull that through and I've got the separation here from the upper leg and the lower leg. I'm going to continue to work this skin back around away from the carcass. I'm gonna to come to this other side and start to do the same thing. And I find we, we've got to pull this tail out, but I find it easier to remove the skin from the rest of the body and do the tail last. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna get this other rear leg and then we'll take the skin off the head and then we'll pull the tail. Sierra's for roadkill this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time of year to do it because in the summer, if you don't see it happen, that, that animal is by the time. Yeah. How old is this, uh, this squirrel? 
Uh, I think he's just a few months old. Yeah. A few months old. Well, I don't know about his age, but I think he's been in the freezer for a few months. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is definitely a young one, though. All right, so I've exposed that other knee, and again, I'm just going to cut through that tendon, find the joint, get my knife, a little wiggle right through the leg, and there we go. Now. <clears throat> This this stuff here is so yeah. The cornmeal would have been yeah better yeah, use of it. That. Yeah, this will do the same thing as you see, but the cornmeal is a lot a lot less expensive. Yeah. When you're cutting through the knees, is mm -hmm. it fine to just kind of split the first layer first with the with your blade, mm -hmm. uh, just so you don't uh, cut in too much to uh, to its life, and then you can get some wire cutters and cut the rest of the knee or with that you could but if you cut through the bone you're gonna have a jagged edge and so you just run the risk of, of maybe potentially cutting the skin with that the jagged edge of that bone oh, okay. if, if that's the way you want to do it it's gonna get the job done yeah. it's not wrong it's just not the way that I prefer to do it okay. and again I'm not gonna say hey you got to do it exactly like I do it or you're wrong <clears throat> because you're not um, if you want to cut it if you want to just expose it and get some big diagonal cutters and snap the bone, that's up to you. So we've got most of the back exposed here. Um, I'm going to keep working the skin around until I can get my finger through. I'm almost there. And so you can you can apply a little pressure and pull here and there, but you know, and you'll learn what's too much pressure and what's what's not too much pressure. But see there, I got my fingers through. I'm gonna just kind of give it a little pull. You can see where I nicked the visceral cavity. So we're gonna put that back in there. Just gonna absorb some of this fluid. Now I'm gonna work on the front legs. And it's the same as the back legs. I'm gonna expose those knee joints. you'd say the elbow All right. expose that a little more and I'm just kind of pulling the skin tight and then I'm not pushing down real hard I'm just you know letting that the tightness of the skin and the sharpness of the blade do the work if you find yourself really having to push down hard to make a cut it's time to change your blade out. So there's the elbow. These front legs are a little, a little bit of a challenge because you kind of got to go behind the bone and then, and then get down and into that joint. So it can be a little bit tricky. You feel like, oh yeah, I got it. And then you don't really have it. So you just got to kind of wiggle in there. Where is that joint? And sometimes just manipulating the limb kind of helps to expose that joint. Okay. Here's where you might get frustrated and want to just grab a pair of cutters. Yeah, I was thinking about it earlier. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, or should I just be patient? Patience Man. is good. There, there, there's, there's the joint right you there. You pass that barrier, it's like, boo, and then you just go. Yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> see, now we got it separated. And... You just cut off the joint, so that's it. Whatever method works for you, I just, I just like to not create some jagged edges where I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. All right, now we're going to come over and do this other side. A lot of trauma from that little pellet. Yeah. 
So the trick is to to you know find a pace that's fast enough that you make decent progress, but not so fast that you're you're making more work for yourself by cutting a bunch of holes, tearing your skin. <laughs> And always keeping that skin pulled tight. It makes it makes it a little easier. Uh, let's see. Coming back through here. Separated. All right, so now really what we've got is the head and the tail before we've got, you know, the skin off the carcass. What I like to do, and it's just personal preference, is to just come in on the mouth side, on the outside, and just kind of reach inside the gums here and just make a few incisions before trying to peel this inside out, right? And so I'm just kind of, excuse me, cutting inside the gums a little bit. If you don't like the dentist, you can imagine what this must feel like, right? right. And I'm just, just trying to make some incisions to kind of make it easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel this inside out. So I'm going to start to turn this guy. Right, and I'm pulling on the skin and cutting that connective tissue. And what we're going to run into is the ear socket. So we want to make sure that we cut that ear as close to the skull as possible so that we don't have a big hole in our skin when we turn it right side out. So as we start to work this skin back, here's the shoulder. As we start to work this skin back over the head, we're going to get first to the ear sockets and then to the eyes. So there's the ear right there, the outer ear coming down into the skull. I kind of cut into it just a little bit. And so what we want to do is we want to come back here and kind of cut down into the skull and cut through that ear, that ear canal there, separating the ear from the skull. So now we just got a little bitty hole in the back. If we cut too far forward, when we flip that right side out, we're gonna have a big hole right there. Not the end of the world, but now we've got a lot of work to do to, to kind of hide that on our finished product. So I'm gonna to come to the other side. And again, I'm just pulling the skin tight and then using the blade to let the blade do the work. There's our other ear. So I'm gonna come back in here, cut that off. There's the ear hole. Now, I'm going to kind of flip this over and try to get underneath the chin here. Keep pulling this forward, and then we're going to hit the eye sockets. And we need to cut through that to separate the skin from the eyes. Right, and we're getting, should be getting pretty close, so right there. You can kind of see that dark spot. Let's see if I can get it on camera here, right? You can kind of see the dark spot there. That should be our eye sockets. We're starting to expose that eyeball a little bit. Right, and we want to kind of cut through again, let the blade do the work, 
cut that skin away from the skull. There's some musculature there so that the, the squirrel can you know, blink its eye. Now we're exposing the eye. We wanna cut this skin away. If we're not careful, you know, we'll have cuts underneath the eye or over the eyes. So, and again, if that happens, not the end of the world. Just, we just have a lot of extra work to do to kind of repair that, and cover it up. Um, and again, you know, you guys are just getting started. So if you do make that cut and make a mistake, don't beat yourself up. Don't be upset. It happens. I still do it from time to time because I get in a rush myself. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over and come back from the other side now. Again, I'm just pulling the skin tight, stretching out that connective tissue, and then letting the blade do the work. Jessica? Okay. Now, if we were going to use this skull, and on the birds, we will use the skull, uh, at least for the round skin. When you get to your lifelike, if you, I recommend buying a reproduction head. It just makes life a lot easier, but you can still use the skull. We'll have to clean out the eyeball, the eyeballs and clean out all of the brain matter. Otherwise that will rot on us. But we're not gonna use the skull in the, the squirrel round skin. So we're just, we're just gonna leave the eyeballs in place. We're just gonna cut this skin away. So now I'm getting closer. Here's the, there's the bottom jaw, right? So remember I kind of made those incisions in the mouth to begin with so that when I got to this point, it would hopefully come off a little easier. So now we're into the mouth cavity there. All right, I'm just continuing to pull, cut this skin away. Go back over here to this side. Do the same thing. When we get to the tip of the nose, we've got the cartilage to deal with. And so ideally we're gonna keep the, the blade close to the bone and cut the cartilage away with the skin. That way we don't accidentally damage the nose skin. Um, we can clean the cartilage off the, the hide once we've got it completely separated. It's a lot easier to do it that way. So there's the front of the, the skull. I'm just gonna try to cut through there. scraping bone. There we go. All right. So now we've got that separated. We're going to continue to work back to the tail. pull a table, a tail, and then we'll stop right there. We're about out of time. Have you guys uh, done taxidermy before? I have a friend that I've watched you taxidermy, but no. you never done it yourself? No. I'm excited. <laughs> Something I've always wanted to do, I just haven't known how to do it. So when I found out we had the class here, I was jumping for joy. <laughs> so with, you'll run into this with birds as well, but with the mammals, right? We're, we're on the underside of the tail, so we've got the anus here. We may run into some fecal matter. We've got to cut through that, that 
tubing to expose the tail. So there's the tail. And what we want to do is we want to pull this skin back, or just like we've been doing around the carcass, we want to get as much as we can so that we can use that tail puller and hopefully this tail will pull in one piece. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to get the rest of it out. So we'll have to slice the tail like we did the belly and get that, that bone and muscle out. Otherwise it'll rot on us. So I've exposed some of that tail, right? And now if I just pull real hard, I also run the risk of separating the tail from the body. So if I cut too deep, I make that a weak point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my thumbnail and kind of, you can see how it's wanting to pull there. So what this tool does is the flat surface of one side will push against the skin and allow the muscle and the bone to pull through the middle. So we're gonna, you can see there now, we don't want to pinch the actual skin because that's kind of working against what we're doing. So we want to get it above the skin and then we're going to try to pull. This doesn't always work. Sometimes the tail breaks. Sometimes we it'll slip, and we've got to we've got to cut down or, or skin down a little bit more. I'm in the wet zone. You're in the wet zone. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And see, I think I think I'm I'm gonna have to. Yeah. See, it's sliding right over that. So what I'm gonna have to do is skin down just a little more, so that I can get the smaller opening of the tail puller around that tail. And. You, you don't need one of these. You can use your thumb, but it's hard on your thumbnail to do it that way. And so we're gonna try. Just what like, is that called? It's just a tail puller. Yeah. And so there we go. Look at that. That's what we want to have happen. That's what we want to see every time. Because otherwise we've got we've to split that tail open and remove all the rest of this That's little, because the muscle goes, down. yeah, and it's a lot more work. So now what we've got is we're gonna get this guy. Now we don't wanna get rid of that just yet because we're still gonna get some information off of that. But what we've got now is a hide, right? We still got a lot of work to do on this hide because we've got these forearms that we need to get out, right? So we gotta turn these inside out all the way down to the paws because there's fat and there's muscle down here. So we've got all four of those to do. And we've gotta get all of this fat and muscle off of this skin here. So we're a little bit short on time, but remember I said I like those curved scissors, right? So I just stick my finger under there and I can just do this. And that's this stuff that comes off kind of nice, All right? So this is a great tool. This is also where we use those fleshing boards. We'll stretch this over and you take a knife and you can just run it almost horizontal to the skin and this, will come, this stuff will come right off, right? So we're gonna save this so that if we were doing a lifelike mount, I would use this, um, I would get my measurements from the squirrel before I skinned it, but then I would use this, get these measurements, so then when I get my body, I'll try to shave that, that form down to these measurements so that this skin will fit over that form. Otherwise, you know, if we've got too big of a form, now we're not going to be able to close that skin up, it's not going to fit right, and if we got too small of a skin or form, we're going to have all this baggy skin and it's not going to look right. But since we're, we're just about out of time for today, what we're gonna do is, and this is what I want you to do with your projects, no matter where you are, unless you've got the carcass still attached, in which case you don't really have to put this stuff in, we're gonna apply a liberal coat of this Instant Preserve, whether you're using the Calyrex or whether you're using the Borax, just put a lot in here, because this is gonna, it's, this is not a tan, but this is going to start, this is going to prevent bacteria from getting started. And um, if it is started already, which it likely is because the animal's dead, um, it's going to stop that bacteria production. And this is going to help to preserve that skin. And, and next week, or whenever we pick up this project again, we'll just clean this out, start over. And then when we're done, we will uh, wrap it up. The last thing we want to do, whenever we're done, again, unless we still have the carcass in there, is we wanna wet a bunch of paper towel and we wanna stuff it inside. And that's gonna help prevent the skin from, from 
um, becoming freezer burned in the freezer, right? So it'll pull, have some moisture to pull. Um, if we were, if you were just gonna pick this project up tomorrow, you just need to put it in the freezer overnight. You could probably get away with skipping that step, but we're in this class once a week, so this is gonna be in the freezer for seven days. Put some wet paper towel in there, bag it up, put your name on the bag, put it on that top shelf. Next Thursday morning, I'll take it out and it'll be ready for you guys to work. So, all right. All right.